Good day students, welcome to MathGovServe.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over the anatomy of uh, the integral expression. If you have any questions on this presentation, feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we'll be glad to assist you. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the anatomy of the integral expression. So um, let's say you have the integral from um, A to B. of some, some function f of x dx. All right, now, when we're talking about anatomy, what I'm focusing on in this uh, clip is basically the composition. What does an integral expression constitute of? What do the different parts of the uh, integral expression mean or represent, okay? So that's what we are focusing on on this clip. Now let's take a look at this symbol right here. This symbol is of Latin origin. Okay, this is the lower case of the alphabet S um, of the Latin alphabets. Okay, now what does this symbol S mean? You can think about it as an S symbol. Okay, so this represents, this is the integral symbol. Okay integral symbol. And what does it mean? In the context of calculus, this basically means continuous, continuous sum. Okay, if you're adding over an interval continuously, then um, you're looking at an integral. You also have something known as a sigma notation. This is discrete sum, and this is can be thought of as uh, a continuous sum, all right? So let me just illustrate uh, with the use of a number line. So let's say you were adding everything between two numbers, let's say A and B. You're adding everything in between these two numbers, including A and B, then you're looking at an integral. But let's say you're adding um, discrete terms between A and B, including A and B, in this case, you're looking at sigma notation, okay? So the continuous sum is known as an integral and the dis discrete sum is this uh, Greek alphabet sigma notation, which was also borrowed by the um, Latin to represent the uppercase S, okay? All right, so there goes your um, integral symbol. Think about it as continuous sum. Now, what does this little a here mean? This little a represents the lower limit, the lower limit of integration, okay? It's your lower limit of integration. So when you're integrating over an interval, let's say from a to b, a represents your starting point, okay? That's where you start summing or accumulating from. Now, what does b represent? Uh, you have lower, guess what? B represents the upper limit of integration, upper limit of integration, all right? When you're, into, when you're um, integrating over an interval, let's say from A to B, you're starting from A and you're gonna stop where? At B, okay? So this is basically where you stop accumulating uh, from, all right? Now let's move on to the next piece of our integral expression, f of x. In the, context, in the context of an integral expression, f of x represents the integrand. Just like you have, um, just like you have a radicand, there's a symbol underneath the radical, what you're taking the square root or the root of. Um, what you're integrating is known as the integrand, okay? Integrand basically represents the function, function to be integrated, okay? So whatever technique of integration or rule of integration you are using, you're going to be applying it to the function or the integrand. Now this dx piece, what does this represent? It doesn't do much, but it does tell us some 
important information concerning what you're integrating with respect to. This DX symbol is known as the dummy variable. The dummy variable. The reason why it's called a dummy variable is because it does not impact the result. It does not impact your computation. Okay, but it could serve as a very important guide as to um, some components or some things that are happening in your integram. Okay, so um, think about the dummy variable as something that tells you the variable of integration. It tells you what the independent variable is. Okay, so dx is basically d multiplied by your variable. Um, that you're integrating, integrating with respect to, okay? So that's your integration uh, with respect to, that's your integrating variable, okay? And then later on when you're applying um, your integral notation to volumes and areas, dx is very important in helping you orient your slice in order to uh, correctly accumulate your area or volume over an interval. Okay, so the next question is, how? what is the appropriate way of saying this expression? How do you say uh, this expression right here? Well, if you wanna say it, you say it as follows. The integral, the integral from you say the integral from, and then you indicate the limits of integration. Of, you start with the lower to the upper. The integral from a to b of f of x dx is, and then dot, dot, dot. All right? You can also say it by uh, indicating what the identity of the uh, integrand is first, or you can say uh, the integral, so, or you can say the integral of your integrand f of x from a to b, your limits of integration is that, that, that. Okay, so the, the, these are the ways that you basically uh, verbalize what this expression is. Okay, and to wrap uh, up this video, we just want to go over a real quick list of uh, word association. Um, some of the words in AP Calculus that you would like to associate the integral uh, notation with, okay? So whenever you see the integral notation, what um, concepts or what words do you want to call to mind? The first word you want to call to mind is the whole concept of accumulation, okay? Accumulation. So when you're accumulating uh, something over an interval, what you're doing is you're finding the integral of that uh, function that you're accumulating over the interval, okay? So for example, let's say um, we have a certain rate um, of some function, it could be, this could be um, your velocity or it could be the rate at which something is happening on an interval, let's say a time interval from A to B, okay? So the amount accumulated by that rate over the interval is going to basically be the integral from A to B of that rate. Let's say it's rate with respect to time, okay? So when you're accumulating rates over time, you're thinking about the integral. Let's say this rate for velocity, for example, then when you accumulate your velocity over an interval, you end up um, with position, okay? You're changing position. Um, now, another word you want to associate with, uh, with the integral symbol is area, okay? Think about area, you think about geometry, but it also has applications in calculus, okay? So let's say you have a function um, that is continuous over an interval, let's say from A to B, let's see, that's, let's from A to B, 
And your task is you want to determine the area between the function and the x-axis. Okay? So you have to accumulate vertical slices from A to B, vertical rectangles, and find their total sum. So the area here is basically uh, the integral from A to B of the function. Let's say this function right here is f of x, okay? Of f of x dx. So anytime you think about integral graphically, it's representing area, okay? Another graphical representation of uh, integral as volume, okay? We can extend this concept of area into the three-dimensional realm. Okay, so I just copied this area right here. So let's say we have this region, but we proceeded to rotate this region about an axis. Let's say the x-axis, for instance, okay? And um, we rotated it about the x-axis. What we have is some solid. Okay, now how do you compute the volume of the resulting solid? Well, you can use the integral again to capture that volume to compute what the volume is. In this case, you're going to have the integral from A to B of pi times the radius in this case is going to be your function. Okay, pi r squared is going to be your function square dx. All right, so when you think about integral, you think about volume and area graphically. All right, another uh, terminology you want to associate with the word integral is the inverse of derivative, okay? So if you want to undo differentiation, you can use integration to, to carry out that procedure. Let me illustrate this using uh, something called the Fundamental theorem of calculus part two, just to illustrate the inverse relationship between the derivative and the integral. Okay, so let's say you take the derivative of the integral of a function, let's say with respect to time, this is simply going to be f of x. What this is illustrating clearly here is that the derivative and the integral. Uh, are exhibiting an inverse relationship with one another. They're basically neutralizing each other out. That's why you're ending up with uh, a function, okay? So these are the words um, that you want to associate with the integral when you're taking AP Calculus AB. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial beneficial to you, to give us a thumbs up, your positive feedback is um, important to us. Do subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of the Fundamental of Calculus Review um, series. Any questions as indicated earlier, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be glad to uh, support you. More clips can be found on mathlistserve.com on the AP Calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.